Over the years, the future of warfare has shifted from brute force to calculated destruction at high speed. While the United States sits at the top of the pile, China has unrelentingly created hypersonic missiles, potentially leading to leapfrogging the United States missile technology. However, Sweden's new laser jet technology has been touted as a rebuttal to China's missiles. Could the United States be thinking of collaborating with Sweden? How does this new technology affect the future of modern warfare? Join us as we discuss Sweden's laser jet capable of destroying China's air fleet in a record 15 seconds. The geopolitical war between China and Taiwan has always been a bone of contention between China and the United States. While the United States has often shown support in recognition of the One China philosophy, they have also armed the pro-Taiwan sect in China with critical weapons of war, including some of the United States' greatest aerial threats. China's rationale behind fighting against Taiwan being an independent state is nearly the same as the Kremlin's decision to fight Ukraine tooth and nail. Both countries simply want control over the other because they believe that they have separated from their roots and pandered to the West. While China meets the United States' decision to help Taiwan with disdain and anger, America suggests that their commitment to Taiwan is bound by the Taiwan Relations Act, which makes it impossible for them to look the other way. However, Beijing remains unfazed by the United States' decision to help Taiwan with a staunch belief that Taiwan remains a forcefully departed nation from China and they will be taking it back, either through diplomacy or by force. The United States and China, both countries with immense military might and an understanding that they are both capable of mutually assured destruction, have steered away from straining their relationship any further to a point that it escalated into an all-out war. However, it hasn't stopped them from displaying their military might, reminding each other of what either one of them is capable of in terms of war and aviation technology. For some context, the Straits of Taiwan have been heavily patrolled by the United States military, with reported sightings of their warships leading to frequent near clashes between them and the People's Liberation Army Navy, which is often called PLAN. China saw this as a deliberate attempt by the United States to flex its military muscle. So they responded in kind, testing hypersonic missiles, cyber warfare abilities, artificial intelligence-driven combat vehicles, and electronic systems that worm their way into jamming signals of enemy aviation technology. America immediately recognized how far the Chinese military had come and just how much threat they could pose to the aviation part of their military. While the United States saw China's display of strength, they remained unfazed and chose to pursue their agenda to keep Taiwan armed to the teeth, even while they recognized the One China philosophy. The United States' actions and contributions towards Taiwan have reportedly strained their relationship with China, which has now decided to upgrade and expand its military might. According to China's president, Xi Jinping, the Chinese Communist Party's overall goal was to attain the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, which includes becoming a global hegemon and keeping Western influence, especially the United States, as far away as possible from the Indo-Pacific nations. China's ambitions remain to integrate Hong Kong and Macau and gain full control over Taiwan. To achieve hegemony, they understood the importance of having indomitable forces on land and in the air. In an attempt to modernize the People's Liberation Army of China, they developed an intensive and extensive AD system around the East and South China Seas. The move was well calculated to deny aerial access around the Chinese border to Western influences like the United States therefore forcing them out of China. To the United States, the move seemed like a deliberate attempt to impede foreign aid for Taiwan because China was planning a potential invasion and capture. As part of China's anti-access area denial program, Beijing has consistently invested in creating hypersonic missiles like the DF-17. While China was heavily investing their money and resources into creating missiles that traveled faster than the speed of sound, reaching Mach 6, the United States' response was the creation of direct energy weapons, otherwise called DEW. Direct energy weapons are the tip of the new age technological spear. These advanced military systems include the use of lasers, microwaves, or particle beams, which are focused on their target for a considerable number of minutes before their disastrous effects are brought to bear. 
While the aviation world believes that the United States are still decades away from actually creating laser weapons that travel at hypersonic speed, an Army spokesman has come out to reveal that the laser weapons are not being used in real combat. But how exactly do these lasers work? Laser weapons work by converting electrical power into an intense stream of photons that, when narrowed through a beam director, can burn through various materials, like, say, the carbon fiber body of a drone, the casing of a rocket or mortar, or even the hull of a small boat. In April 2024, the Army officially deployed a pair of 20-kilowatt palletized high-energy lasers, or PHELs, in an undisclosed location abroad. However, reports suggest that it was actually effective against drones, easily shooting them out of the sky. The palletized high-energy lasers were created as counter-drone weapons, which were to be tested for. The palletized high-energy laser isn't the first high-energy laser system to see action overseas in the hands of the United States troops downrange, but its current deployment as an air defense solution for the Army is a watershed moment for the service's directed energy weapons, many years before being deployed in battle. However, watching China consistently improve their Army with next-generation weapons created the need to move fast in a bid to catch up with them. Although America seems to have found its way in establishing a cutting-edge laser weapon, the Pentagon remains divided on the budget allocated towards security and building a weapon that isn't fully trusted. While politics and diplomacy kept the budget strict, China kept on improving on the hypersonic missiles, leading the United States to seek new alternatives, like a potential collaboration with Sweden. Sweden has often been regarded as a hub for new technology and socialization, and is often regarded as a land of giants with its tall mountains and people. However, the world seems to overlook their contributions to the aviation landscape, but not America. Sweden's long history of innovation in both electronic warfare and advanced weapon systems has often been overlooked. However, Saab AB, a leading defense company in Sweden, is behind the development of some of the best intelligence and counter-surveillance weapons, including the Giraffe radar system, the Gripen fighter jet, and the Arexis electronic warfare system, just to name a few. It has also recently shifted focus to creating direct energy weapons, which have been reportedly discussed to be attached to the latter version of the Gripen fighter jet. However, with China continuing to build their military towards creating its hegemony, the United States needed a surefire response, which was cost-effective and devastating. And that's where Sweden comes in. But just how devastating is the Gripen? The Saab JAS-39. Gripen is a single-engine supersonic multi-role fighter aircraft designed as a lightweight and agile aerial platform with advanced and highly adaptable avionics. Reports suggest that it was built as direct competition to the United States F-35 Lightning II. The latter's stealth capability, paired with its heavy payload capacity, made it a force to reckon with in the world of aviation, leading to top countries all over the world being willing to pay for it. However, Gripen takes a swipe at it with its canard control surface, which in aeronautics is a wing configuration in which a small forewing or foreplane is placed forward of the main wing of a fixed-wing aircraft or a weapon. The term canard may also be used to describe the aircraft itself, the wing configuration, or the foreplane. The Gripen was designed specifically in tandem with the Times, following in the same steps as America's F-35s, especially with its maneuverability. While traditional aircraft were designed to be aerodynamically stable, New Age aircraft are deliberately created in ways that defy aerodynamics, causing definite instability. While the concept sounds out of the box, the genius behind it is to create situations for easier maneuvering. Before the advent of the New Age aircraft, older jet versions were made aerodynamically stable so that the jet stayed balanced even after impact. However, in modern aircraft, if the pilot releases control of the jet, it won't be naturally stabilized. This became a major theme with New Age aircraft since countries decided to put maneuverability first. However, the Swedish company found a way to bridge the gap between stability and maneuverability with the introduction of the digital fly-by-wire, often dubbed the FBW. The introduction of the fly-by-wire led to the complete eradication of the traditional mechanical connections between the pilot's control and the aircraft surfaces. Instead, the fly-by-wire translates the pilot's input into electronic signals, 
which then adjusts the jet's control within milliseconds, achieving easy maneuverability without having to give up stability. While its technical qualities remain one of its best attributes, it is also a low-budget aircraft, which requires very little to be maintained, unlike its competitors in the United States and Russia. Gripen's engines are powered by the Volvo RM12 turbofan engine, a licensed manufactured derivative of the General Electric 404, fed by a Y-duct with splitter plates. Changes include increased performance and improved reliability to meet single-engine use safety criteria, as well as greater resistance to bird strike incidents. The jet was created to have completely low maintenance, which means even the engines were tweaked to that effect. It was reported that several systems and subsystems in the engines were redesigned to meet the low maintenance demand, easing the budget for the Swedish government. While the usability and low maintenance demands caught the eye of the United States, perhaps their real passion for desiring this Swedish fighter jet is its armaments. The Gripen is reportedly compatible with different types of armaments while delivering the payload at will. The aircraft has always been able to carry a 27mm Mauser BK-27 cannon, air-to-air -air missiles such as the AIM-9 Sidewinder, an AGM-65 Maverick, air-to-ground missile, and even anti-ship missiles, making it compatible with even naval warfare. However, the Swedish Army soon required an upgrade on the aircraft's armament. So the Swedish company responded with the addition of the MDBA Meteor missile, the short-range IRIS-T missile, and the GDU-49 laser-guided bomb. The sudden compatibility of these bigger guns, paired with their low-cost and low-maintenance features, all while traveling at supersonic speed, made the aircraft appealing to everyone, especially the United States, which was dying to catch up to China's sudden boost in military might. While the obvious features make the jet an appealing buy for a client, one of its rarely discussed capabilities includes being a swing roll aircraft, which means that it is capable of instantly switching between roles at the push of a button. The human machine interface changes when switching between roles, being optimized by the computer in response to new situations and threats. In other words, it does not need to be landed and reconfigured for a different threat. For some context, older aircraft that were capable of performing multiple roles, including ground attack, air attacks, or even attacks on naval shores, needed to be landed and reconfigured by a crew to match whatever threat they might be facing. A perfect example is the F-4 Phantom II. If the Phantom was geared up to fight in air-to-air -air combat, but its task was suddenly changed to ground combat, it needed to return to base first, where it was then retrofitted with armaments suitable for ground combat, losing time and possibly the fight too. But in the case of the Gripen, all it took was a push of a button to switch its role from air attack to ground duels. Saab's campaign director for India, Edvard de la Motte, stated that buying a Gripen is the perfect decision that any country could make because their choices of armament are purely based on the customer's choice. Hence, if the client wanted the armament of their aircraft transported from foreign countries, whether India, Australia, or the United States, it could be arranged. For the United States, that was good news. It meant that they could design their laser weapons and fit them on a cost-effective jet and potentially destroy one Chinese DF-17 in 15 seconds or less. However, why were the United States so worried about the DF-17? Not many countries in the world come close enough to China in terms of warcraft technology. Hence, it is no surprise that their technology worries a superpower like the United States. While the capture of Taiwan remains a heavy part of their agenda, they decided to strengthen their military position in preparation for whatever influences come from the West when they choose to occupy territories and countries around China to foster their hegemony. The DF-17 was the real game changer a Chinese medium-range system equipped with a hypersonic glide vehicle. Building a dynasty has always revolved around diplomacy and military power. Hence, China recognized quickly that aviation technology advancement could get them closer to their dream of returning to their former glory, boasting both territory and weaponry. The People's Liberation Army has reportedly created this technology to counter adversary missile defenses, as well as to develop a fast, long-range, high-precision strike capability that gives the opposition little to no time to react. Imagine firing a weapon traveling at a speed of over 4,600 miles per hour 
and escaping every anti-aircraft countermeasure by performing maneuvers at Mach 6 speed as the altitude increases. It really is the perfect missile. While older missiles needed to rely on sheer kinetic energy to hit their target, the DF-17 was a completely different ballgame. The DF-17 was contracted to China's 10th Research Institute, which is also called the Near Space Flight Vehicle Research Institute. The organization operates under China Aerospace Science Industry Corporation, or CASIC First Academy. The United States confirmed proof of the DF-17's existence in 2014, identifying it as the Wu-14. However, the news media referred to it as the DFZF. However, just how is this perfect missile fired? First, it is transported to its destination by a transporter erector launcher, popularly called a TEL, which is used to carry, erect, and launch these missiles. Afterwards, a ballistic missile booster derived from DF-16 is fired into the atmosphere, trying to lock onto its target. The ballistic rocket provides the hypersonic glide vehicle with the exact amount of force and speed needed to launch that far into space, accelerating the rocket to great altitudes at hypersonic speed. Once the booster burns out, it is detached from the hypersonic glide vehicle warhead, which then descends to hit its target, but not at a speed of Mach 20 or more, like the traditional missiles. Instead, it keeps a steady speed of Mach 6, gets locked on its target, and hits with enough force to create a massive explosion without relying heavily on kinetic force to have an impact like the traditional missiles. However, the real game changer on this rocket is not only its speed, it is the program capacity to maneuver air defense without external control while remaining locked on its target. This level of maneuverability was impossible in conventional missiles. The threat of this cutting-edge hypersonic missile created the need for the United States to not only create a counterweapon, but also focus on creating similar hypersonic weapons in the aviation landscape. Pressured by the Chinese Army's technology, the United States made a detailed report on how many times the People's Republic of China had tested their DF-17 in 2018. They figured that between January 2014 and November 2017, China conducted at least nine flight tests of the DF-17 at the Taiwan Satellite Launch Center in Shanxi Province. Perhaps the United States' real gripe with this missile is its possibility to also be retrofitted with a nuclear warhead, as explained by a Chinese commentator. Already it has generated an immense impact with just the hypersonic glide vehicle warhead and more importantly, with precision and accuracy, meaning even if it were equipped with a nuclear warhead, it is most likely not going to miss. While the United States and the whole world watched on as China expanded their army, the ones who felt their world exploding were Taiwan. Imagine struggling to take and retain your sovereignty and freedom, and your opponent keeps testing out his shiny new weapons every day in your backyard so that you can hear the impact. Such is the case for Taiwan, However, the United States has never been one to back down from a fight or a thinly veiled military threat. America's intentions with Taiwan remain the same. They will keep supporting them with aids and weapons to defend themselves and be willing to go the extra mile to help Taiwan keep their sovereignty. While questions of their decision to intervene in the Indo-Pacific region ran rife in the media, they sought out ways to counter the Chinese DF-17, but also in the most cost-effective way. While rumors ran rife that the United States might take on the Swedish Saab JAS-39 Gripen and retrofit it with their own laser technology as an answer to China's worrying aerial dominance, recent reports are yet to confirm their choice. But with the Pentagon and Congress at loggerheads on the amount of budget allocated to chasing a white elephant project, like a laser fighter jet, it remains to be seen if the United States will rather buy Sweden's Gripen and take a real swipe at its Chinese problem. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.